Hey, Commerce Rockstar! Are you tired of seeing the same old boring coupon codes everywhere you look? Want to create unique coupons for your shoppers that would expire for each person individually and bring in more sales? Well, you're in luck. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create unique coupon codes for your Shopify store that will have your customers clicking add to cart faster than you can say cha-ching. If you're excited and don't want to miss anything, click subscribe and like under this video. This helps me a ton and it will make it easier for you to find my other tutorials that people find super useful. And as a quick intro, my name is Casey. I run Luck & Co Agency, where we help seven and eight figure e-commerce brands with retention marketing. Everything that you see on this channel comes from direct experience. So that's another good reason there to subscribe. Okay, so let's dive in and start creating some serious coupon code magic. We'll be creating these unique coupon codes directly in Klaviyo, which is the email and SMS platform that I recommend for e-commerce brands. Chances are you're already a Klaviyo user, but if you're not, you can start for free with a link in the description. Before we dive into the technical nitty gritty, let me just give you a quick word on what is a unique or dynamic coupon code in Klaviyo. Normally, when you're in Shopify and you go to coupon codes in Shopify, what you can do is you can create static coupon codes. That means it's the same coupon code for everybody who wants to use it. And if you want to set an expiration date on that code, that expiration date obviously will be the same for everybody who is using a coupon code. That is a little bit problematic if you want to create very specific coupon codes and limit them to specific people. One common problem with static coupon codes is that they can easily be shared. And we all know as consumers, those discount aggregate websites where you can go and you can find a coupon code for virtually any store. So if you want to reduce coupon code abuse, that's where you want to go with unique or dynamic coupon codes in Klaviyo. So let's get our hands dirty and figure out this coupon code magic in Klaviyo. And the first thing that you'll actually want to do is to check your Klaviyo and Shopify integration. Click on your company name in the bottom left hand corner and select integrations from the little menu. You will want to see Shopify and enabled integrations. If it's not there, then go to all integrations, search for Shopify, and then go through the self-guided process to integrate the platforms. It shouldn't take you more than five minutes. Once that's out of the way, we want to click on content here on the left and then select coupons. By the way, watch until the very end of this video to see some cool use cases for unique coupon codes and some cool applications that we've done in our team for our e -com clients over the years. From over here, you will want to click create Shopify coupon in big black button. And let's name this coupon code something descriptive. And my pro tip is that you will want to name this coupon code the same as you're naming your flow that you're using this coupon code in. And spoiler alert, coupon codes, unique or dynamic coupon codes are most helpful in flows because it's in the welcome flow where you want to give the new subscriber a coupon code and say, hey, this coupon code expires in five days. When you give people urgency, that's when we humans get to act a lot more quick uh, and actively. You know, you can always just send a static coupon code and say that it expires, but it wouldn't be true. And then some people also can figure it out that if it's like a static looking coupon code, like welcome or sign up one or something like that, uh, it can't truly expire because it's the same for everybody. So savvy, like tech savvy uh, subscribers will know that. So that's when you want a unique coupon code. So you will be using your unique coupon codes mostly in flows or automated sequences. So let's say we're using it in abandoned cart flow. So I'm going to call it abandoned cart. Um, and I like to keep the names um, like one word or at least use the underscore and you will see why in just a second because it's going to come in handy when we paste this coupon code into our emails. Um, next, you will want to select a prefix and prefix is something um, like the characters that Klaviyo and Shopify will add in front of all of the coupon codes that will be created in Shopify. So the way this works is you're setting this up in Klaviyo, but then Klaviyo and Shopify integration, the, the thing that we checked at the beginning, it will go and tell Shopify, hey, Shopify, create a hundred of coupon codes according to these rules that we're setting up right now. So 
when you go into your Shopify and you search, like you can go into your coupons in Shopify and you can search and look at your coupons, you will see these coupon codes over there. And if you want an easy way to identify the coupon codes, because they will all look wacky, uh, a random string of um, characters and numbers. If you want to like look at a coupon code and be able to tell, oh, hey, this is a coupon code that I created for a welcome flow, or this is a coupon code that I created for abandoned checkout flow, then you need to create a prefix over here that you'll be able to recognize in Shopify later on. And I like to do something like AC over here, for example, and then a little dash. And so what's going to happen is that every coupon code that is created for this purpose will have AC dash at the beginning, and then a string of eight, I think Clavio says yes, uh, a string of eight random letters and numbers. So let's just go with AC dash. Uh, for our abandoned cart uh, coupon. Oh, by the way, let's copy this uh, because it's going to come in handy as well. So copy. Um, now we want to select which type of discount we want to do, fixed amount, percentage, or free shipping. Oftentimes, like most brands usually go with percentage, but obviously you can uh, select any of these options. So let's say we want to do 15% off. Next, you want to choose whether you want to apply this coupon code to the entire order, only specific products, in which case you'll be able to browse your catalog, or specific collections, and you'll have a drop-down menu and you'll be able to select the collections from your Shopify store. Um, another super important uh, choice that you have over here is to require a minimum purchase. So if you want to give your subscribers 15% off, but only if their cart is, let's say, $50 or more, this is where you set this up. Pro tip, the place where it comes in most handy is actually an abandoned checkout or abandoned cart flows because if you want to do something more advanced, like split your abandoned cart flow into two paths for high value cards and low value cards, and then you only want to give the discount to high value cards, this is where the minimum purchase amount is going to come into play because if you say, hey, my I consider, uh, let's say, $100 or more a high value card. And if somebody has that much worth of products in their card, I want to give them 15% off, then that's what you're going to do. So like for the sake of this example, just stay consistent, let's say it's $100. And then in the email, you tell them, hey, like, thank you so much for filling up your cart with so many great products that we offer. Um, and since your cart is over $100, we give you $10 off or 10% off or 15% off in this case, whatever that is. Uh, but it's important to tell people that you have that uh, minimum purchase amount because if their cart is now lower than $100, then this coupon code won't work for them. Then you want to choose the active dates. And if like if you're using this in a flow, which most use cases are in a the flow, then you want to activate at send time. And only use this one if you're using this coupon code in a campaign as opposed to a flow. But I'm going to keep it at send time. And then expiration date. So one of the key benefits of having a dynamic or unique coupon codes is that it can expire differently for all of the individuals. So this is my choice uh, in this little menu over here and you choose after a certain number of days or hours. So let's say we're in abandoned checkout or abandoned cart flow that we're going with, uh, and it's high value carts. And we tell them, hey, like because you chose so many products, we're giving you 15% off, but make sure that you use it quickly because it expires in two days. And what you do is you put two days over here, and now a unique coupon code will be generated for each recipient of that email and the coupon code will expire two days after that recipient first received that code. Another pro tip for you, if in the email you're communicating that the coupon code expires in two days, I actually like to make it a little bit longer on the back end, like three or four days. Like I'm actually pretty liberal with this and I'll give people four days because, you know, people open the email later and we all want just a little bit more time to use our coupon codes. If you make it too tight, people will either like not complete the cart at all because they missed the window or they will reach out to your support. Uh, and it's, you know, like if they reach out to your support, you will have to give them the discount anyway because it's kind of a 
shitty <laughs> not to. Uh, it's not good customer service. So, you know, why not make it four days? But in the email, still communicate that it's two days. And that way, you're kind of uh, reaching the, the, golden, the golden middle of all of these options. And then again, if you're using this coupon code in a campaign, then you will probably want to expire it on a specific date, but it's not really relevant for flows. And with this, those are all of the options that you have here. So you just click create coupon. So now that the coupon code is created, how do we use it in emails and SMS messages? This is how. You need this special piece of code that you can paste into both your emails and SMS messages. And the code looks like this. And this is the part of the coupon code where you need to paste the name of the code that you just created. And remember, I copy pasted that so I can just paste that right in and then copy this whole thing and then go into the email that I wanna use it in and then insert it in there. So let's actually go and do that. Okay, so I'm just using this random template just so that we can see how the code works. And I go into this text. So this actually, Spring 75, is a great example of a static code. And a code like that works perfectly for a one-time sale. So if you send a campaign to everybody on your list and you say, hey, you know, from May uh, 20th to May 27th, we have this spring sale, go use code Spring 75 to get 75% off, that's crazy. But if you're using it in the flow, in the instances like I described just above, then the unique coupon code is a much, much better way to go. So the, what you do is you wanna paste this entire thing in here. And one super, super important thing that if you don't get right, will give you a lot of errors, so pay attention here, are these quotation marks. And it shouldn't be a curly one, but instead it should be a straight one. So like this, they look like almost the same, but if you use a curly one, maybe it will give you an arrow and it's not gonna work. And another thing is that when you like copy paste this whole thing, like this code between different apps, like if you use it in a text editor, like a document, it will automatically get edited to curly quotation marks. Basically just pay attention to it. And if you see an error, that's why. And you just need to edit those uh, quotation marks. So let's click done. And so you see that in the editor, it kind of looks like this and it's super long. And if you don't want it to be like this long and mess up your design, then you just need to come up with shorter names for the coupon codes. But now let's preview and it's going to preview like this, and you see that it says abandoned cart preview. And that is because Clavio and Shopify are not actually going to generate a coupon code just for the preview. But once you actually send that email out, at the time that this email is sent out, a coupon code will be created or assigned to each recipient. And if you're really doing this for the first time, what I recommend doing is um, creating a campaign and sending it to a list of one person only. And I think Clavio does that by default, by the way. They create a preview list, and on that list, they only have like the account owner. So go create a campaign, select the preview list. It should be just you. Use the coupon code in that campaign and then send that campaign to just yourself. And once you receive that, not as a test, but as an actual sent out campaign and open it in your inbox, you will see that that coupon code became that unique coupon code. And then to further test it, actually go start a checkout and then use that coupon code in your checkout. And you'll see that it's going to do the magic and actually apply the coupon code that you created to your cart. Now, if you wanna use this dynamic coupon code in an SMS message, you do exactly the same thing and you just copy paste the same code that I am sharing on the screen again into the SMS message. The only thing about SMS messages is that if you have for some reason two different unique coupon codes and you wanna use both of them in one message, you will be able to do that in an email, but you will not be able to do that in an SMS. So let's say you have um, like a unique coupon code for 10% and 15% off, um, and you wanted to use that in the same message, you can do that in an SMS, but that's a really weird like one-off example. I don't think most people will need that, so you don't have to worry about that most probably.
Okay, so now as promised, let me show you a couple of examples of interesting ways where you can use these unique and dynamic coupon codes. The first example is kind of what I've been describing throughout this video, and that is a an abandoned checkout flow um, where the flow is split based on the value of cards. So this one is actually a little bit even more complex and we're splitting based on whether the person who is abandoning the cart is a first time shopper. So they've never purchased from this brand before, or if they're a returning customer and they have made purchases in the past. And for first time customers, we're also splitting based on value. So you'll want to do a trigger split and then select value. It really depends on what is a high value card for you. For this brand, it's $400. For a lot of DTC brand, it will be lower, maybe like $100 or $150. And then for high value cards, you give them uh, discount A. And then for low value cards, maybe you give them a lower discount or maybe you don't give them a discount at all. And then over here, you can, like the really cool thing is that you can really use that urgency and it works especially well for abandoned cart flow. So that this is a perfect, perfect use case for where to use a dynamic coupon code. Another example is um, you create a dynamic coupon code for your welcome flow. And obviously like you included in your welcome emails, but then if people went through the entire welcome flow and have not used their coupon code, so they haven't made a purchase still with your brand, you can continue including that coupon code in every campaign that you send to people. And you just make that a, um, a dynamic block in Clavio. Uh, you know, they have those hide show blocks. So you only show that block to recipients and subscribers of a campaign who have never made a purchase before. And let me show you what it can look like. So you just add this like little banner at the top of your email and you say something like, oh, hey, you're new, here's your coupon code. And then you're just reusing the coupon code that was assigned to their profile uh, that they can still use. Or if that coupon code expired, uh, then you can create a new coupon code for people and use it in all of the campaigns that they receive. This is it. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment under the video. Those comments are really, really what makes uh, or breaks a YouTube video. They do help us uh, move up in the algorithms. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.